Good morning, guys. Ooh. Today is September 26th. If it's not the 26th, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it is Monday. We are still going through the book of Matthew. On Friday, we ended at Matthew chapter 22. Um, so we're going to just read Matthew chapter 23. Um, 23, where's 24? Uh, yeah, we'll just read chapter 23 and chapter 24. Um, Jesus criticizes the religious leaders. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside and they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head table at banquets and in the seats of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Don't let anyone call you rabbi for you have only one teacher and all of you are equal as brother and sister. And don't address anyone here on earth as father for only God in heaven is your father. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be a servant, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut your door at the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves and you don't let others enter either what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you pharisees hypocrites for you cross land and sea to make one convert and then you turn that person into twice the child of hell you yourselves are blind guides what sorrow awaits you for you say that it means nothing to swear by god's temple but that is the but that is binding to swear by the gold in the temple. Blind fools, which is more important, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? And you say that to swear by the altar is not binding, but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding? How blind? For which is more important, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? When you swear by the altar, you are swearing by it and everything on it. And when you swear by the temple, you are swearing by it and by God who lives in it. And when you swear by heaven, you are swearing by the throne of God and by God who sits on the throne. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Blind guides, you strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat, but you swallow a camel. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. 
What sorrow awaits you, teacher of religious law, and you Pharisee, hypocrites. For you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed, and you decorate the monuments of the godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would never have joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourself that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. Snakes, sons of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. But you will kill some by crucifixion, and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues, chasing them from city to city. As a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all time, from the murder of righteous Abel to the murder of Zachariah, son of Berechia, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, whom you killed in the temple bef between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. Jesus grieves over Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I want it to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is abandoned and desolate. For I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings, but he responded, do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth. They will, Alexa, stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tell you the truth. They will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus on the, sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be fam famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached through the whole world so that all nations will hear it and the end will come. The day is coming will you, when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out of the deck of the roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out on the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for there will be great anguish, greater anguish than any time since the world began. And it will never be so great again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Then if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders, so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen, chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. So if someone tells you, look, the messiah is in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or look, he's hiding, don't believe it. 
For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines in the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate the end is near. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the power in heaven will be shaken. And then at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be a deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth, and they will see the Son of God coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet, and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and the heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings, right up to the time Noah entered the boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the meal. One will be taken, the other left. So you two must keep watch, for you don't know what day the Lord is coming. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a, bur a burglar was coming, he would not keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. Sorry, he would keep watch. You also must be ready at all times, for the Son of Man will come when least expect it. A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put the servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks, my master won't be back for a while, and he begins beating the other servants, partying, and getting drunk? The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, that's the end of chapter 24. <laughs> I feel like chapter 23 and 24 were just, um, Jesus was very straightforward and he just said, everyone, you know, you guys are hypocrites. Like, you're following all these laws all these religious laws you're sure to make sure you tithe your 10 percent, but then you have no mercy you have um no no grace for other people you don't even care about justice but you'll dot your i's and you'll cross your t's um just so that you can say oh i'm a christian or oh i'm super religious it's not about that um it's about God's law. It's about God's word, which is the reason why it's super important that you guys are reading your Bible. Um, and I don't mean to sound pushy, but I wasn't reading my Bible consistently or even with a true desire to understand even a year ago. I would read it. Um, I would listen to someone else read it just as like a checkbox for my day and honestly while I was listening I was thinking about everything else I needed to get done in my day I wasn't really truly trying to hear what God had to say um so please don't be like all those people who are just dotting their i's and crossing their t's and um just doing what 
religion says rather than what God says. Um, open the book, figure out what God is saying to you, um, and follow his command and his laws and his word so that you won't be someone he calls a hypocrite. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. Have a good day.